Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the Brex BRX Do More PLC FTP Client Get Put. Now detailed information contained in the video can be found at accautomation.ca. The link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So the Brex Do More PL, or PLC FTP or file transfer protocol is now available on our PLC using Do More Designer version 2.8 or higher. Now using FTP get and FTP put instructions, we can transfer files to the FTP server. Now this ability is called an FTP client. So files created from our data logging on the Do More PLC can now be transferred to the network automatically through our PLC program. And then information files on the network can be read into our Do More PLC and become part of the program. This is ideal for things like recipes. So we'll be setting up a Windows 10 FTP server on our computer. All right. Then using FTP put, the FTP client command on our Bricks Do More PLC, we'll store a file on the FTP server. Then the FTP get client command instruction will be used to retrieve the recipe text file on our server and this recipe file will have three timers and then we're using this in a sample program to turn on some outputs. So let's get started. So the first thing we'll do is actually show how we um, will uh, install the FTP server on our Windows 10 PLC or, or computer right here. So the first thing we'll do is call up our settings command and you can do that by hitting the Windows key and X and then select settings. Then we'll go to the apps and over here you'll see we have program and features. What we do is we click on those program and features and that brings us up the program and features menu. We then turn uh, Windows features on and off. So when that happens, what we do is we want to go and take a look at our information or internet information services. We'll expand that. We'll look at our FTP server server. And what we'll do is click on the FTP server and then the other two uh, options down here. And then we want to also click on the, under the web management tools. We want to click on the IIS management console. This will allow us then to configure this FTP server. So once we select all that, we say OK, and then it will install this software for you. So once that software has been installed, then what we do is we'll, um, we'll call up our, our control panel. And we call up our control panel by going to the start and typing in control, and you'll see the control panel will then start up. And then what we want to do is select the system and security. And under system and security, we want to go down to the administration tools and click it. And when the administration tools come up, then we want to click on the Internet Information Services IIS2 Manager. That's the one that we clicked to install that software. And when we click it, you'll see that now we have our uh, console come up and we just highlight this and go into the sites and then what we can do is you'll see that we've already have it set up as the win FTP site but if we want to start a new one we would click on the sites right click and then hit add FTP site we'll give the site name we'll just put in test for now and the physical path what we do is we, we sort of supply this onto our computer where we want this path to be and right now you'll see that we've got it right into um, a, a, a file on our computer called WinFTP. So we hit next then our binding we're going to leave that as all unassigned we're going to start the FTP site automatically we're going to say no to the SSL which is the security level and but if you're going to have this on a network and you can have multiple users and you can have write permissions and read permissions then you may want to then instill that into the uh, 
program. Then we hit next. Our authentication. We do anonymous and we'll do basic. And then what we'll do for all users, we'll allow to read and write. And then we hit the finish and that will create our site for us. So we're using anonymous mainly because we, on our application, we're just doing this as a test to actually show you how to get that information from our Bricks Do More PLC onto the FTP server. Click cancel. So we have that located right here. So if we didn't have the um, anonymous uh, going in, then what we can actually do is set up the uh, uh, commands back and forth to say who the user will be. So that is, that is what we have to do to actually start our Windows uh, server. And what we can do is right click on here and we can go switch to content view. And you can see here right now we have content in that server right now, which is the recipe txt file. We can actually go to our file and we'll actually see here under the data window so again, on my D drive, under my name, we have FTP or Win FTP, and that is the recipe file that we see right now. So that is our Windows FTP server now running on our computer. So next, let's uh, close this down now. And you can see that's quite, um, there's several steps, but it's quite easy to, to do and add this site. Now, once you've added the site, um, you have to also check your firewall on your computer and it must allow for the FTP server to actually operate. So if we look at um, our Windows Defender, you can see if we uh, look under the allow apps, you will see a, a setting called FTP server. It must be selected, private and public and enabled so that it will allow that app to actually operate on our system, Windows system. If we have a program like I do, like Zone Alarm, then what we wanna do is we wanna view our zones and under our firewall, we're gonna allow our PLC at 192.168.1.11, which is our Rick's Do More PLC location as a trusted site. That way we can move information in and out of that uh, FTP server. So we'll say OK. And we'll just close that down. Close this one down. So that is our Windows uh, server now running in our uh, computer. Now let's turn our attention over to our Bricks Do More PLC. And under the Bricks Do More PLC, if we go to the uh, system configuration, Call this up and we'll go into the device configuration. And under device configuration, we're going to add a new device and we'll have an FTP server plan. Okay. And okay. And then we give a device name. We can use a server address and a timeout. So we're just going to cancel that. And we've got one already made here, as you can see. We call it Win FTP Server. And we're using the IP address from the computer that we just set up. We're gonna use anonymous for our account. If not, we would have to put a name and a password in. Then we're gonna use the default uh, server port, which is 21. Our timeout is 30 seconds, and we're gonna use passive mode. Now, passive mode basically tells the client to use the same port for communication in both directions. So that's what we, uh, uh, we'll enable on that one. So we'll just say cancel on that because we already have it set up. And then we'll look at the program. And our first program here is what we're going to do is we take uh, on C100, when it turns on, we'll use an FTP put. And the FTP put, we're going to take our uh, FTP device, which is our F or win FTP server and we're going to take a local file from our SD card and the file name is called my log uh, my file log dot s or csv and we're going to place that into the directory 
and then we're going to turn on a couple bits to see if it if C5 comes on, then that means that file has been transferred. If C6 comes on, then the file hasn't been transferred. So let's just uh, close out of that one. And what we'll do is we're on line to our uh, PLC currently. And what we'll do is just quickly take a look again at the hardware that we have here. And we have our Bricks Do More PLC right here. It's the model number BX-DM1E 18ED13. And you see currently right now we're using the same program we did previously for our dynamic web pages. And you see my proxies connected going in and out for my first input here, which corresponds to the first output here. Then the new program that we have, which we'll show you, we have uh, outputs one, two, and three, and they are cycling uh, based on some timer values that we have in the PLC. Then we have our, um, currently we're in the terminal setting, and we have uh, our SD card plugged in here, and our SD card, we're gonna take a file that we've done previously, and we're gonna transfer that into our FTP server. And then our communication obviously is through our ethernet port right here. So let's turn on uh, C100. Okay, so you see C100 now turns on here. And what we'll do is it's actually working. And eventually one of these bits is gonna turn on. There we go. And you'll see that um, my success fit turned on. So now when I open up my file explorer, I can now see my file log, that SV, or S, or CSV file that we transferred now from that memory card into our Bricks Do More controller. So that seems to be working just fine. So let's just put that uh, aside for now and call, go back to our program. The next part is we're going to um, turn on bit one or C 101 and what it will do is get a file and it will get a file called recipe.txt and then it's going to set, set bit C7 if it's read successfully or C8. If it's on C7 then what we're going to do is open that file and we're going to uh, open that file on our RAM because we're going to transfer it to our RAM memory. You see here, it's going from our server to our RAM and transfer it to our RAM memory. And we're going to have a file structure called file zero. And then once that's complete, we're going to put C9 on to indicate that it has been successful. Once C9 comes on, we actually do a read file. And what the read file will do is read that file into a string structure called SS0. Because what we do is we have a text file, which is ASCII codes into the file. Now it all comes in through SS0. And then when that's successful, we turn on C11. When C11 comes on, then what we want to do is we want to close that file down. And once that file is closed, then we're allowed to open it again or do something else. So that's basically the sequence. We get the file. Once the file's uh, retrieved, we open it up, we read it into some variables, and then we close that file down. Next, what we have to do is we have to um, take those variables and we have to create them from a ASCII code into um, a uh, integer. In our case here, we have three timers in our uh, recipe and those three timers are going to um, allow us to uh, change some values that we have in our program so let's go back right now to the recipe just to show you what we mean if i call that up currently right now i have um, this text file on here on my server timer one is equal to 1000 milliseconds timer two is 2000 milliseconds timer three is 3000 milliseconds you'll notice that um, it's very important the position that we have in our control here. So that way we can 
then pick out in our bits where those starting locations are. So if I wanted uh, 500 milliseconds instead of 1000, I'd put 05 just to make sure the place settings the same so that we don't lose that, that holder or that location in our, our text file. So we'll just close that down. Again, just move that off to the side. So once we have our string in SS0, what we want to do is take that input string and break it up. So we take our um, the eighth bit over or the eighth byte or character over and we re read four of them and then we put it in SS1 and then SS1 then gets converted using string to integer to V1 memory location. And once we have it on V1, then we can use this later on in our program. We do the same thing with timer number two and timer number three. Once, and then what we have is a simple program that what we're doing is we're timing up different timers. So if it's not timer three is done, then we activate timer one. And when timer one's done, it activates timer two. Timer two done, we activate timer three. And then it repeats again. So the actual output, we will cycle. So one is on for one second, two is on for two seconds, output three is on for three seconds. Currently right now, based on our time values that we see here. So now let's go back to our FTP server to make sure that that is um, still working okay. There we go. And what we want to do is let's change those values and let's put in, uh, let's put in 2.5 or, or 2,500 milliseconds. We'll put in uh, a 1,000 uh, milliseconds, so one second. And then on this last one, let's put in um, uh, 4,000. So we've changed that sequence all around. And now we're just going to save that. So now our recipe has been saved onto our FTP server. And it's located right here. Now what we want to do is get that into our uh, Bricks Do More PLC. So let's go back up to the command here. And this is the one we want right now where it's going to actually um, retrieve the file. So let's turn that on. And now that's on. And again, it's going to grab that information and then eventually turn on our success bit. Again, it just takes a few seconds here. Now our success bit is on and it opens it already opened the file. It read the file and closed the file. And our new timer values is 200 or 2,500 on timer one, 1,000 on timer two, and 4,000 on timer three. And again, we converted those into our V1, two, and three in order to use it in our program. And you can see now we have cycling based on our new logic in the, in the controller, one, two, and then three. Okay, so a great addition to our Bricks Do More PLC is the FTP client commands. And we can now log information, store it automatically to our server, and we also can grab information like recipe information, bring it back into our controller and have that functional. So if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so you make sure you hit the subscribe button to get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click that bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.